Navigating your career can be scary. Sometimes you'll feel imposter syndrome and feel that everyone around you is smarter than you. Other times, maybe you'll feel like you need to make an important decision and you don't know how to approach it. Regardless of what you're going through, everyone needs someone to talk to and to ask for help or guidance. And that's the topic of today's video, mentorship. So let's get into it. So first of all, what is a mentor and what kind of value can they provide you? Well, you can think about a mentor kind of as a career advisor or a career coach. They're a person that's typically working at the same company as you. They're usually one level above you, so they have a little bit more experience, but not too much so that they feel disconnected from your role. And usually you meet with them for around 30 minutes, once or twice a month, and there's someone that you have career-focused discussions with. Now, in my experience, there's generally two themes of questions or two types of questions that people come to mentors with or people need guidance with in terms of their career. The first one is career-focused questions. So these may be questions such as how do I get to the next level or how do I get promoted? So this is where a mentor can provide some feedback in terms of finding the right projects or identifying gaps in the person's skill set that they may need to work on in order to reach that next level. Another way to use a mentor is for handling specific decisions. So these may be focused around soft skills, like how do I manage a difficult peer or a difficult manager that I may not be getting along with? Or when is it time for me to consider changing teams? These are great questions that you can ask a mentor and typically you speak to them in confidence. So it's okay to have these kind of heart to heart discussions with. Now, the other major way in which you can leverage a mentor is for tech focused problems. So this can be things like reviewing a design document. In my experience, it's great to have someone that's outside of your team and outside of your problem area that can provide you with some very objective feedback on your design document. This is a way that I leverage a mentor quite a bit, and I'd suggest some of you to consider as well. Now, another good way of leveraging a mentor is to analyze your mental model or your process of how you're thinking about a problem. So typically when we're working through designs for larger projects or just trying to figure out how do we solve this particular problem that we're working with, it's useful to just lay out how you're approaching it and what your decision making process is. This is where a mentor can help you with being objective and analyzing your process to see if there's any holes or just provide you some general feedback on how you're approaching the problem. An outside perspective can very often be valuable. So if you already have a mentor, I want to give you some tips on how you can utilize them well, because the worst thing is when you find a mentor mentor, you go through the effort of matching with the person, and then that relationship just fades over time, or you stop meeting with them, or you just run out of things to talk about. So I want to give you some tips to solve that problem. Now, the first one is to come with agenda items. I wouldn't just come to mentorship meetings and have nothing planned. You really should come with some pointed questions or some pointed discussion points that you want to get out of the meeting. After all, your mentor is sacrificing their personal time to talk to you. So you don't want it to be just about random topics or just what's going on in the news. Typically, you want these to be career-focused questions or something that you can get value of. So make sure you come prepared. Another really, really good use of a mentor that I have extensively benefited from, this is definitely one of my favorites, is to do retroactive analysis of your decision making. Now, this is especially important if, in my case, I was entering a new role at the time, but it can be useful in many different circumstances. And what I mean by this is, say, for example, you just made an important decision and you're not quite sure whether or not you made the right decision. Now, it's great to utilize a mentor in this circumstance. So go to your mentor and say, this this is the decision I made. This is what I was thinking at the time. This is why I made this particular decision. Was this the right way of approaching things or do you see any holes in my thought process? This is a really great way for you to grow as an individual. Being open-minded and also being able to explain why you made a specific decision is an important use of your mentor. Hands down one of my favorites. I do this all the time. I think you should too. You also may want to consider talking about more than just work items. I know I just said come with an agenda, but it's not always all business and you really want to get to know your mentor or your mentee on a personal level. This can reveal a lot about the person's character and a lot about how they think about problems. So it's important to get to know the person on a more personal level. I think the best mentorships I've had in the past where I felt more of a bond with a person because I knew them more deeply than just what they presented at work, but more on a personal level. So don't ignore this. Get to know the person beyond just what happens at work. All right. So now I want to talk about some tips for how you can become a good mentor. 
Now, the number one job for you as a mentor is to be empathetic and to be supportive. You're not there to tear anyone down. You're there to bring the person up and help the person navigate through career challenges. So a lot of your job is just to listen and provide feedback. It's not to judge and it's not to make the person feel bad. It's to bring the person up and help the person get through something. Another very useful tip as a mentor is to share your own experiences as they relate to a problem that the person is describing. So for example, say a mentee comes to you and they're facing a brand new design for a project and they just feel stupid stupid or they feel imposter syndrome, they feel like they're not going to be able to do this or they're just completely freaking out and they don't know what to do. That is a feeling that everyone can relate to. We can all say at some point in our career that, you know, we didn't know how we were going to get through this roadblock, but you always get through it and you always make it through the other end. So just giving a person confidence by sharing your own circumstances of how you were in a similar experience is very, very valuable in giving the person confidence so that they can get through whatever they're trying to get through. So the TLDR is share your experiences as they relate to the problem that the person is trying to solve and just be supportive. My next tip is to not necessarily give a way an answer to a person's problem, but to ask thought-provoking questions. This can be tempting and it's often a trap that many of us fall into. So say for example, a person is facing a technical problem and they're looking for an answer. You as a mentor, you don't necessarily want to give them that answer right away. That's like giving a man a fish instead of teaching them to fish, where they can sustain themselves forever. So the idea here is don't give away the answer, but think about a way to ask a question that will get that person to figure out the answer on their own. Sometimes this doesn't happen immediately and you may need to ask multiple questions, but the idea is to not give it away, but lead the person to the answer. You want the person to think that they figured out the answer to their question without you having to do anything. That's your goal as a mentor. My last tip is to not overload yourself with mentees. I truly believe that quality trumps quantity in this category. I typically have at any given moment around three or four mentees that I either meet with once every three weeks or once a month, just because at this point in my life, I have a lot more responsibilities. Um, but you don't want to overload yourself with too many or else you run the risk of relationships fizzling out and just losing your mentees over time. So don't put yourself in that situation. And in this final section, I just want to talk about how to find a mentor because this can be a problem for some of us that are at smaller companies. Also, some of us that may be shy and don't really want to ask. Unfortunately, this is kind of challenging. So typically at larger companies, there is usually a mentorship program. So I know at least my company has kind of a portal that you can go to and look up people that are willing to be mentors and certain career interests. Typically, you want to find someone that has similar career interests. So I wouldn't suggest, you know, a person that's primarily front end focused, finding a mentor that's primarily back end focused. You want your problems to kind of be similar so that your mentor can provide the best level of guidance and relate to whatever you're going through. So find someone with similar interests. Uh, if you're at a company that doesn't have this type of program, you may just want to start asking around, like tell someone that you're looking for a mentor and you're looking for someone just to meet with regularly to talk about career and tech decisions. People are generally more than willing to meet with you. And honestly, when someone asks me to be a mentor, I'm kind of honored. So I'm more than happy usually to say yes, as long as I'm not overloaded. I think you'll find most people are willing and it's not a big deal if they say no. So I hope this video was useful and convince you to either find a mentor or become a mentor to start helping others. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other career advice ones over on the left and right. And thanks so much for watching.